What's going on, growers? It's James Prigioni, coming to you live from Jersey. It's August 7th today, and we're about halfway through summer. The gardens are still pumping out pounds and pounds of food. So today, me and Tuck want to take you along with us for an epic summer garden harvest. Let's go! Let's start things out by grabbing some grapes. We have some actually along the fence line on the outside of the garden. So we love growing grapes along the fence line here. We utilize that extra space, but we have some sets right here that are ready. I'm gonna grab a couple. Look at this, homegrown grapes, delicious. Not 100% perfectly ripe, but you can harvest grapes once they start tasting good. And these taste delicious. Let's get this set right here. Nice. Tuck thinks they're pretty good. Let's get this set right here. What do you think, boy? Pretty tuck approved. Beautiful grapes. And we're harvesting these because we have so many that are about to be ready. As you look up along this fence line here, there's a bunch in this section, but I want to take you into the garden where there's even more grapes. Then we'll grab some tomatoes and stuff. As we enter the food forest, there's even more grapes right here along the fence line. As you can see, this is still that same grapevine, just absolutely loaded. That's enough about grapes though. Let's move over to some of the tomatoes that we have planted in this section too. But I mean, look at this. Some of these hidden here too. If you peek under here, look at that. Just absolutely beautiful. Nothing gets me more excited. And some tomatoes right here that came up on their own, some volunteer tomatoes getting ready to ripen. We have our own tomatoes ripe and ready right here that we're gonna do some harvesting of though. Right here, we've got the super sweet 100 tomato with a bunch of little cherries on it. Let's grab a few of these first. Absolutely loaded, beautiful, excellent flavor on these too. So this is like, I guess our first big harvest of tomatoes. We're gonna have a pretty lot to grab. <laughs> Look at Tuck, he found a cucumber. We'll grab it for him. Hey Tucky, you want a cucumber boy? He's trying to rake it right off the fence. If you love seeing Tuck harvesting his own food, hit that like button and subscribe. Here we go, I'm just gonna hold it out for him, let him get it himself. There you go, bud. There he goes. So we'll let him enjoy that. Nothing like growing things completely organic and knowing that it's safe and okay for you or your dogs or anyone to just come out here and grab stuff right off the plant. That's one of the great things about doing it natural and organically is, you know, it's safe to eat whenever you want. Let's keep grabbing some tomatoes though. So we got some of those super sweets. We'll grab a few more in a little bit, but let's take one of these tomatoes right here, a lemon boy. Nice color. Could use a little more time, but looks delicious. Then next to us right here, this is the big rainbow, it's not right yet, we'll let that go. And right here next to us is the Costaluto Genovese. Let's get a few of these. Beautiful rib-shaped tomato. Look at that. I just love the variety and everything. Man, so, so much uh, diversity and distinction. Grab another one of these, and they're cute little things at the bottom popping out. It's pretty funny. It reminds me of like the unicorn tomato. Next to us here, we've got another cherry. This is the Honey Drop Cherry. So we'll grab a few of these. A little smaller than something like your Super Sweet 100s or even smaller than your Sun Gold Cherries, but still a very good, delicious, and productive tomato. Let's throw some of those. And then let's move to this front side where we have a couple big tomatoes, like a Monster Goldie Yellow. Goldie Yellow is a great heirloom tomato, and it's uh, one of its uh, hybrids that it, that it helped breed is the Chef's Choice Orange, so that's a great tomato too. But right here we have another Lemon Boy. Let's grab another one of these. This is a hybrid of the Lemon Boy, and I do grow some hybrid tomatoes because the hybrids usually produce better, in my opinion. A lot of times they're bred for specific reasons, to be more productive or to withstand certain diseases. So it's always grow to, good to grow some hybrid tomatoes, even if you're not saving seed from them. Then we've got the Sun Gold here. I noticed my Sun Golds this year are splitting and cracking a little more than usual. So you'll get splitting and cracking in tomatoes a lot of times when it's hot weather and a good amount of rain or if a lot of rain comes at once because, uh, because basically the inside of the tomato grows quicker than the outside of the skin and it forces it to split open like that. There's nothing wrong with the tomato. You can still eat it. It just you know, opens the opportunity for uh, pests and disease to get in. Look at this monster though. This is the goldy yellow tomato. Man, this thing is looking beautiful. This thing produces monster tomatoes. Let me cut it. Cut. It's tough to cut this one out though. But man, look at this thing. Whew, it's like a triple tomato in one. Beautiful. I gotta put this one on the bottom so it doesn't crush the others. And then we've got a couple more goldy yellows here that we're gonna grab too. So look at that, it's pretty funny. How small this one is and how monstrous this one is on the same, same vine right there. Pretty cool, pretty unique. All right, let's move along. 
from this section. We've got some more stuff right behind me. I can get some cherries though, but I'm gonna leave those for later. And right here we've got some eggplants and stuff, some peppers that are, aren't ready yet, but they're still doing real well. And then some of the other spots in this section, I'm getting some of my fall stuff ready to plant into the ground. Right here we've got some eggplants that are still prepping too, and we've got some of the some pink tongue eggplants right here. Those are the long, thin ones. They're just starting to produce and starting to put some eggplants on. So these are great for uh, eggs and stuff in the morning. I really like this little thin eggplant. Let me show you back here. We've got this, uh, looks like, Tuck, get out of there, boy. This guy's trying to harvest my eggplants. Boy, you don't even like eggplants. What are you doing? Look at, look at this jokester. See, sometimes I think you uh, watching think that I try to get Tuck into the videos. It's not like that. Tuck tries to get himself into the videos. If he wants to be on camera, he'll just steal something and he knows how to get, get on or he'll be hanging out in the back shot. Tuck, stay boy. I'll grab you another cuke. I don't want him even eating those, really. So let me take that from him. Put that in my pocket and we'll grab him another cucumber once I move along the fence line. But I want to show you this Williams Pride apple. Man, this thing is incredible. Look at the color of the apples too. And I just keep having ones that fall on the ground. This one fell on the ground. This is like so, almost so red, it's purple. When we shine it, look at that. It's just absolutely beautiful in my opinion. Incredible flavor too. So juicy and so delicious. And then right here is something a little bit unique. This is a fruit that's actually uh, an annual that we can get just in one year. These are called ground cherries. So when they're ready, they'll fall to the ground in these little pockets that look just like this. This is when you wanna eat them, open it up, and it'll be this little yellow cherry in it. This is the Aunt Molly's ground cherry. And let's pop one in our mouth. It's, a, it's got a good sweet flavor, pretty distinct. Let's try it. Mm. Great sweet flavor, so much different than anything else. It's, it's tough to explain the exact flavor, but it's, it's good. I mean, it's not as good as a strawberry or a blueberry, but it's very delicious and a cool uh, fruit that you can just grow as an annual. Next to us right here, we have more green beans planted but it looks like Tuck is getting a little bit restless. So let's grab some cucumbers for him. We got some cukes along this fence line here. Oh, here's a white cucumber. I don't think he's gonna want that one. So let me move along to the next side because we've got some regular cucumbers. A lot of them planted in here are white and, and pickling. I got some big ones down here. Tucky, you want a nice cucumber down here, boy? So as we come over here, Tuck will follow me. And we've got another set of dragon tongue beans planted. These are just starting to produce because I have dragon tongue beans ready. So one section we have beans ready, another section we have ones that are just coming up so we can extend that harvest. So if you come back here with me, we've got this, you see some cukes here. Got a big one up there that I basically missed. Look at that long one back there. And then let's just grab this little one for him here. Hey Boyo, this guy, this is, we know what this guy likes. Crack it open, oh, that's the good stuff. That's the good stuff, boy. This is what he's been waiting for. So we'll let him do his thing, snack on his cucumber, and we're gonna keep grabbing some stuff. Hit that like button if you love seeing the guy in the videos. But look at this cucumber up here. It looks like I kinda missed it. This is a little bigger than I like them to get. But it's not turning yellow or anything, so the size is still okay. And we got this Suyo Long probably, is this one back here. Let me try to get it through the fence line. Try to pull it through, ooh, perfect. That's a nice little one, quite beautiful. And then you don't have to move far. Right to the left of us, we've got some peaches. Let's check if any of these are ready. Peaches are looking beautiful. This is only a four-year-old tree. Oh, this one looks so ready. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look at this. They just push that in. Oh man, that thing is so juicy. Let me take a bite of it. <laughs> I think I got it all over the camera. I'll have to take a bite and then we'll have to, to fix the camera. Incredible, epic Eden. There we go, we got the lens all cleaned off from those peach juices. I told you that thing was juicy. Right here, let's grab some tomatoes though. This is the cherry bomb and these tomatoes are delicious. Nice size on them too, look at this. Good size, bigger than the super sweet 100s, definitely bigger than the honey drop cherries. So you can grow cherries of all different sizes. These ones are like a perfect size, looks like to pop into your mouth and have a true mouthful. These ones look really nice, but there's another plant also right next to me. We'll grab some of these. Man, these things look good. And as we look up the plant, look how many sets are coming in the future. Fantastic, man. So much food. I love it. And then next to us, 
We've got, this is the zucchini plant that I showed you that I buried the stem in. Look at the size of this thing. So this whole thing is one zucchini plant. Just from all the way there, down to here. Just pumping out so many zucchinis. I'm gonna show you the other zucchini plant that I buried too, just, just massive. Look at this zucchini right here. Look at nice, this is like the perfect size that I like to get them. And I didn't even notice, but if you look right down here, there's a huge one, ha, <laughs> didn't even see that thing. But this thing is putting out so many zucchinis. I got more zucchinis ready on the back side too. But let's keep moving and grab some green beans, some dragon tongue beans and stuff in the back as we swing around. The sunflowers look beautiful. I love the sunflowers with multiple heads because you know the sunflowers look so beautiful and when the head dies off, it's kind of sad. So to have other ones come and renew it, it's, uh, it's beautiful. I love seeing it. Let's grab some of these uh, dragon tongues back here though. And the dragon tongues have gotten into real high production now. Look at these, look at these spots. Look at all the food in the front here, I mean. This is just crazy. So let's grab some of these dragon tongues. You know who shows up once we get to the good stuff. I mean, this guy's got like some kind of homing device or something. Here you go, boy. Tuck, want a, want a green bean? Those are good ones. Oh, looks like he doesn't want it today. That's funny. But he's probably had enough cucumbers and stuff. Let's keep going though, I mean, look at this. I'm not gonna spend too much time harvesting here, but there are a lot of green beans. And then behind us, here's the uh, birdies raised bed that has been taken over by cucumbers. There's some little cucumbers on them, look down here, just on the cusp of being ripe. So we have cucumbers planted at all different times and you can see, look at the, look at the uh, peppers poking through. So we're making sure to come by and pull off any tendrils that are trying to strangle these peppers so they still grow stout and healthy. Basil over here, just the contrast that forms is so incredible. Look at the purple, I mean, striking. Uh, beautiful in my opinion. That's like prettier than a lot of the flowers, I think. Talking about flowers, we have a lot of zinnias planted right here. We've got some uh, onions and red onions and stuff that we can harvest. And then along the fence line, there's so many cucumbers and the purple beans are starting to produce. I'll show you some of those. But look at this zucchini plant. This thing is just so incredibly healthy. Look at the size of the leaves. Look at the color of the leaves. This is the one that I buried again. So this thing's rooted in multiple spots. Look at the original stem how it's kind of broken up and cracked and stuff. But the new stem we buried under here and that thing is just whoop, grown from there and, and look, at, look at the new head down there. One massive zucchini there. And then if you look to my right here, another massive zucchini here. So we have endless zucchini harvests, which is nothing to complain about. Then I wanna show you right over here. Look at the, look at the color of these uh, beans. Here's the climbing beans. I think it's called like the blood hide or something. I'll put the name. Look at that. Man, that's beautiful. And these things grow so vigorously. Look how much they're taking over this whole section. And, and look at this. The amount of flowers. Oh my gosh. Absolute abundance. I love being a part of a garden. I love being a part of a food forest and just being out here, grabbing all the snacks, sucking in the sun. It just doesn't get better. Let me bring it to some more stuff right around the corner in here. A lot of this stuff I can't even eat. It's too much for me to eat, but I find more joy in growing it than anything else. Look at this uh, sun gold cherry, beautiful. Nice set, this is my favorite flavored tomato. That's like the perfect sun gold, you cannot complain about that. Right next to me, the super sweet 100. There's a reason they call it 100. They should call it the super sweet 1000 probably because this thing has way over 100 tomatoes. Look at the sets, how full they are. Amazing, you gotta plant this one. I showed you some peaches earlier, some smaller peaches. Let's see some monster peaches, some big, peaches. Let's check out over here as I'm hanging out on the raised bed. Look at the size, <laughs> look at the size of these peaches. I'm going to pick one just to kind of show you with my hand. Look at this. Massive, beautiful. You'll love to see it. Now over here, well before we get there, look at this uh, little yellow pear tomato and the overall health of the tomato is it's, it's quite weak. So much of it is in my opinion is based on variety. Almost the same location as that super sweet 100 that I just told you, like three or four feet away, yet so much weaker and so much less fruit. Let's move to the pallet raised bed. This thing was basically free to build, build, and it's still pumping out so much food. Look, we've got peppers in the front here, cucumbers planted back here, trellising out, and then unlimited tomatoes. Let me move you back here and grab some fresh cherry tomatoes that are ripe and delicious. Right here we have the rosella tomato, a little cherry tomato. 
It almost looks like the black cherry, but these are delicious little tomatoes. Next to us right here, we've got the Asternia cherry. Look how pretty these are, and look how like different the sets are, like one to the left, one to the right. Check this out right here. Another beautiful set here. And then this one right here, what is this one? I forget the name exactly. The Gardner Sweet Treats. Look how, look how many tomatoes it has. We've got monster sets. Beautiful and incredible. Then we have zinnias all coming through. You can see the flowers. Look how beautiful they are. And then we have all carrots planted underneath it because like that book we love, Carrots Love Tomatoes. Let's see the carrots under here. Let's grab one of these. Perfect. <laughs> look at that, beautiful. And these are so delicious too. Look, because they're not getting a lot amount of direct sunlight, but they're between the tomatoes, working as a, almost like a companion, but their grow space is under the ground. So it's like we're utilizing that extra space. Let's keep moving though. We've got even more stuff to grab. I wanna show you this spot where we're just, it's like a cucumber assembly line. There's so many cucumbers coming out, it's incredible, in a small section. Look at these peaches here too. Man, nice big peaches. We have that because we thin this tree better than we have other years. So we're finding out the more we thin, you know, the more we take away, actually we're getting more back, bigger and better, more delicious peaches. Here is the <laughs> cucumber assembly line. Come on this side and I'll, I'll point out about like 10. Just right here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven back there, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Let's just grab a few. And if, I do snap them off, but it's best to cut your cucumbers off. You really want to cut them right here because you don't, if you, if you tear them like this and you damage the top and they go bad quicker and you don't also want to damage the plant. So I don't always do it, but it's best to, to remove your cucumbers just by cutting them. So let's get another one here. This one's kind of hard to get to. Let's grab some more here. And then another one on this back side, right here. <laughs> this is like so fun to me. Kentuck will come by, see what we got. And there's some bigger ones back here, you'll see. But I'm not just gonna spend 15 minutes showing you picking cucumbers though. That would get a little bit monotonous. So let's keep moving along. And then at the end, I'll show you like our monster harvest, everything together. And this year, or this harvest, some of the stuff is massive, like the biggest peaches I've ever had, the biggest apples I've ever, I've ever had. So not only are the size of the harvest getting bigger, but the actual fruit within the harvest are getting bigger too. Here's some peppers looking really nice. Here's the golden wonder, and then here's an apple sweet pepper, and a cubanelle semi-sweet, all different kinds, looking excellent. Really excited for that. The, the peppers always ripen later into the season, like heading into late August. Then, <laughs> We gotta have more, more uh, grapes in here, looking fantastic. These will be ripening uh, a little later. This is the Niagara grape, so they will stay green, while the other side is the Catawba. But the Prigioni apple, that still has a good amount of time also, until this starts ripening. This is like a later apple, like some of the more common ones. One thing I wanna show you though is over here, it's the yellow and raspberries. If you remember in the early spring, we were eating these yellow and raspberries, but now, Things have come, not full circle, but the plant in a sense, the harvest has come around again. So we pruned these as ever bearing raspberries. You can do that with the fall ones. You can choose to have them just in the fall or have them in the spring and the fall. So we did ever bearing spring and fall. Now they're producing. Here we got some, some yellow ants here. Some more ripe ones right here. Beautiful. Let's grab a couple of these. I love raspberries so much. Berries are so delicious and so packed with uh, nutrition. Incredible. Mm. So sweet and so good. Again, this is the second round of harvest just from this plant. This isn't it with the berries though. I wanna bring you over to the side section where we have so many blueberries still growing. You'd think the season is over, but it's not. We've got later producing ones, always extending that season, increasing our harvests. Over at the side garden now, I just wanna grab some blueberries before I let you go to just kind of emphasize this importance of extending your harvest. Look at how many blueberries this thing still has. This is our later season one. We're just grabbing just so many blueberries. Like right here, just taking a bunch of them. That quick. We just get a nice handful. So we're gonna come out here and harvest a bunch of these. I'm not gonna do it all on film, but look at that. So delicious. And these blueberries, they don't have as much flavor as the earlier ones. I definitely say these are more mild, but that's okay because just having blueberries this late in the season is a gift in itself. 
Hmm. Hmm. Again, a lot more mild. Very strong blueberry flavor. Not any hint of sourness, but overall a delicious blueberry. Not my favorite tasting, but again, it's always nice to have blueberries this late into the season. That's today's video, girls. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Nothing makes me and Tuck more excited than being able to come out and grab these fresh harvests, organic fruit right from our own backyard. We just feel so blessed to be able to do this. That's why we make these videos. We want to encourage everyone who has the opportunity to get this stuff planted in your backyard. Before I let you go though, I wanted to thank Moselle Green for your new channel membership. It means a lot to me and Tuck to know that, you know, we're contributing to you and you feel like you can contribute back. So thanks for that. I also wanted to thank everyone for the super thanks that you're giving to the channel. Again, it means a lot to me and Tuck. I hear that guy sneezing back there. If you could see, he's, he dug a new hole underneath the hazelnuts. He's just chilling, enjoying himself. He's got a lot of snacks on this table too. So we'll make sure we share and that's really the culmination of the video, guys. I just wanted to say before I let you go, to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Tuck and James and this beautiful harvest will be back at you real soon. We 